Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks on the second day of the year, the second consecutive gloomy day to kick off 2023. It was not a very nice looking day today, but at least it wasn't that cold. Before we get on to the business of January's weather, let's do a, just a quick review of temperatures in December because it's interesting to note that we actually ended up a little bit warmer than the average for December, and that's because it got so ridiculously warm at the end of the month. These are high temperatures that are displayed, but of course the overnight lows were way, way above the average, and so we really offset some of the really cold weather we had for a few days around Christmas time with that big warm-up at the end of the month. So the first month of meteorological winter goes into the books as a little bit warmer than the average. A little bit of a surprise, to be honest, considering the uh, deficit we were in going into those last few days of December. All right, the second day of January, warmer than the average. It wasn't a very good looking day today, but way too warm for snow. Uh, temperatures this afternoon, 14 degrees warmer than the average. And uh, boy, it was just a gloomy one. Low hanging clouds, some fog. We even had fog well into the afternoon. There's still some fog out there this evening. Occasionally we had a little light rain and drizzle to contend with as well. As of this recording, at 7.13, the National Weather Service office in Cleveland did hoist a dense fog advisory for some of the counties off to our west, including uh, Portage, Stark, and Summit. Uh, no dense fog advisories officially at, as of this recording for our TV viewing area, but the fog is locally dense out there this evening. I guess I wouldn't be surprised if they expanded this dense fog advisory to include more counties before the night is through. Now, that being said, the radar is fairly quiet, but you know the drill with this, the mist and the drizzle, sometimes that escapes the radar beam. It falls out of clouds that are hanging so low to the ground that the radar beam overshoots the precipitation and doesn't uh, graphically display it. So it's going to be one of those evenings where you're going to have to flip on the wipers every now and then, even though the radar is pretty quiet. Not so quiet to our south and west, though. Actually, a pretty good severe weather episode ongoing this evening down across parts of the uh, southern plains, lower Mississippi Valley. Tornado watches are up. There's been several tornado warnings and all of this action will shift to the east tomorrow so there's a level three out of five enhanced risk of severe weather tomorrow for parts of mississippi uh, louisiana and alabama this uh, stretches from about new orleans to birmingham as far as the enhanced risk the larger slight risk two on that one to five scale goes all the way up into the tennessee valley and while we don't have a severe weather risk around here tomorrow could there be a rumble of thunder tomorrow morning eh, can't rule that out small chance Maybe a somewhat better chance we'll get a stray rumble of thunder Wednesday afternoon with the approach of a weak cool front. All right, so pretty good amount of rain coming our way the next couple of days through the daylight hours on Tuesday. We're probably looking at three quarters of an inch to an inch, and then we'll add on to those totals, especially very late Tuesday night into the daylight hours on Wednesday. A lot of Tuesday night will not bring us much rain, but I think there will be numerous showers around on our Wednesday. And as a lot of people head back to work and school first thing Tuesday morning, it's going to be soggy. The wettest of the weather, let's rewind this, the wettest of the weather will be during the first couple of hours of daylight. As we get into the afternoon, that steadier rain pushes out to the east. We'll get into a period where it's not going to rain as much in the afternoon, and that will allow temperatures to jump. Our record high tomorrow is 61, set in 1950. I think we'll probably try to break that by a degree or two. But with the approach of our cold front, uh, scattering of showers on Wednesday, maybe there's an afternoon thunderstorm in some spots. And then just a little bit of a slice of nice here on Thursday. It'll be a cooler day, but still not bad. We'll be into the 40s Thursday afternoon. Yeah, that's a bargain for early January. It's not the 60s, but we'll take it. Especially, I think the sun will try to come out on Thursday. A little slice of nice ahead of this system, which will pivot in for Friday and bring us seasonable cold and a chance for some snow flurries at the end of the week. As we kick off the weekend, there may be an Alberta Clipper type system, fast moving area of low pressure coming down through the flow that brings us some light snow or some flurries on Saturday. We're going to keep the precipitation chances low for now. It's only Monday. And as we get more confident in that idea, we'll adjust as necessary. But we might have a little touch of snow, nothing big, um, but just a little bit as the uh, first full weekend of January gets underway. We're kind of back to average by the weekend, but even then, we're still a degree or two or three above the average for the weekend. You know, we should be 33, 34, 35 degrees here at this time of the year. And we'll probably be a couple of degrees at least above that over the weekend. No more 60s. But this is not a harshly cold pattern heading our way. In fact, next week will still be a handful of degrees warmer than the average. I don't see a lot of harsh winter cold any time in the next couple of weeks. If we get some decent bouts of cold, and what I mean by decent is below average temperatures, things like that, it's going to be more likely towards the end of the month. I don't see a lot in the way of cold weather compared to the average through at least the 15th, maybe even the 20th or so. I think there's going to be a window at the end of January and probably the very start of February that that window may contain some wintry 
shenanigans that are more significant than certainly the pattern we're in now and we will be in for a while. But yeah, I think January is going to be pretty tame as a whole, and so it's no surprise, going back to the January forecast here, that uh, when they issued this, uh, the Climate for uh, the uh, climate Prediction Center uh, did include most of uh, the country east of the Rockies in the elevated chances of a warmer than average month. Even if it turns colder, even by a fair margin at the end of the month, uh, it's going to be so mild for a while in January that the month probably comes out in the wash as warmer than the average. That'll do it for me tonight. Again, Happy New Year to you and yours. I'll see you right back here on Tuesday. Have a great night, everyone.